Hi! Talking about the proper JAR implementation without discussing workflows is just like talking about the football match without any rules. It's possible, but much more confusing for sure. Each workflow represents the life cycle of each type of issue to be used. It can be more or less complex, not only due to its own nature, but also because of what may or may not be relevant to include in the configuration. Still, with more or less complexity, it's of paramount importance that you dedicate enough time to define and configure the workflows that best serve your needs. Throughout this video, I will share and describe what I believe to be a good solution for some of the most important workflows when using Agile software development in Jira. However, this doesn't mean that other configurations cannot be used. Not only they can, but they actually should be encouraged. Still, when applying those particular configurations that you have defined it, please make sure that they remain fully engaged with basic principles of each type of issue that you want to use. Another aspect that I consider important is the fact that, although each type of issue has its own existence, some of them have the same life cycle, which means that they share the same workflow. This usually happens because they are naturally simple. While describing a workflow, it's very important that we describe properly the two key elements. The several different status that build the correct sequence of steps and the corresponding transition between those steps, ensuring a proper and a meaningful workflow. Finally, if you haven't done so, I strongly recommend that you watch the videos where I describe all the types of items that contribute to the success of this model. This will help you understanding what I describe in this video. So, without further delay, let's get it started. The workflow that you can now see is probably the most used. It applies to the life cycle of a story, enable a story, bug and use case slice. Although it's used in these four types of items, I will make an analysis that will be focused on the stories first and then on the bug. As for the use case slice, and because it works in the same way as a user story, there is no need for additional analysis. The first status is the open. This represents the fact that the story or enable a story has been created and, consequently, is now part of the backlog. In fact, there are several people who also like to have a status, after the open, call it backlog precisely to show that the story is in the backlog. However, and while using a scrum board, from the moment you create the story, it will automatically be part of the backlog. So because of that, I really don't see the benefit of this approach. The next step is to start working on the item. That's the name of the transition, which is displayed in the transition button of your story, that allows to proceed to the in-progress status. This happens not when the team assigns an item to an iteration, but instead, when it actually starts working on it. In other words, when the team starts tackling the subtasks under that particular story. You might wonder why shouldn't we put the story in progress when we assign the story to an iteration? Well, because I usually assign the stories in advance to the several iterations ahead in order to have a properly organized release plan. So, although they are assigned to an iteration, the work will not start yet. The next step is in the in review status, which happens through this action send to review. This status is used to materialize the moment when a story is being reviewed by the team before requesting the acceptance by the product owner. This may include additional automated testing or more formal tests put in place by the team, integration exercises, etc. Please note that this is a step that you may not find the need to include, which is fine. You may want to dilute this type of work as part of the in-progress status. It all depends on your reality and context. However, if you decide to have it, please note that as a result of that verification, the team may reject it because they found it's not ready yet. This would send the item back to in-progress so that it can be worked up. As soon as the team is ready to request the acceptance from the product owner, they should use the action Request Acceptance. This will immediately make visible that the story is now on the process of being accepted through the status in acceptance. Now, like in any normal circumstance, the product owner may or may not accept the story, due to whatever reason. If the story is not accepted, the action should be reject and the status will move back to in progress, so that the team can rework the things that need to be corrected. 
But if, on the other hand, the product owner accepts the story, and it complies with the definition of done defined by the team, then it should be accepted via the action accept. This will bring the story to a status done, which will credit the team with the corresponding story points when the sprint is closed. Now some additional transition notes. For instance, the product owner may not accept the story, pushing it back to in progress. Additionally, the team might also agree with the product owner that the story will be pushed to a future iteration, or simply back to the backlog. In that situation, they should use the action stop work, bringing the status back to open. Now let's suppose that, for some reason, the story no longer makes sense. In this particular situation, the team can either delete the item itself, which unless there's no work to be done at all of that story, I wouldn't recommend it, or it can cancel it. This would bring the item to a cancelled status, making it clear that the item is completely out of the scope to be done. Still, in the future, nothing prevents the team and or the product owner to come back to it and resume its work. For that, they only need to use the action reopen, which will push the item back to the open status. Now let's take a look at the same workflow from a bug point of view. You will quickly see how it actually applies perfectly. When a new bug is found or created, the status obviously becomes open. What happens next, and just like a story, it will be waiting to be worked on by the team. In other words, waiting to be put in progress. After the work is done, the bug should also be reviewed internally by the team before sending it to the product owner for acceptance. In this case, the bug goes to in review, and, if everything goes well, it's pushed to an acceptance. Now, just like a story, the team may also find that it is not ready to be sent to acceptance, which means that it will be rejected and will go back to in progress. Supposing that the item was OK, it was pushed to acceptance, keeping the status in acceptance. Once again, just like the story, it can be rejected by the product owner. He sees that the bug is not solved, pushing it back to in progress. But, if the bug is now correct, he can then push it to done. As you may guess, all the remaining possible actions behave in the exact same way as for the stories. Because the bug is just like another work item, the team needs to deliver. Now let's take a look at how I propose to manage the life cycle of the subtasks. As you can see in the workflow, it's actually quite simple. A subtask, when created, it's born with the open status. This means that it has been identified and it's visible, although it's not being worked on. A main source of subtasks is the iteration planning. As soon as a team member starts working on a subtask, then he should just use the start work action, which will push the status to in progress. This will make clear to everyone, especially someone outside of the team, that someone is working on that task. The last status of the workflow is done. This means that the subtask is completed and the person is ready to move to the next one. This status can be achieved via the action complete work. Please note that I've just used these three steps because subtasks are supposed to be small atomic things that should not take more than a day to complete. Additionally, because subtasks can have different natures, the workflow can become quite complex if you try to cover the several different exceptions that you may get. If you are part of a Scaled Agile initiative based on the Scale Agile framework, I propose to use this same workflow for the PI objective. It's actually quite straightforward. When a PI objective is created during the PI planning, the status goes obviously to open. This PI objective will then be worked on during the PI. This means that as soon as the team starts working in that context, they should update the status to in progress. Finally, by the end of the PI, the PI objectives will be evaluated by the business, closing the cycle after the inspect and adapt session. This is the moment where the status should be updated to done, since that particular PI objective has completed its life cycle. The next workflow that I'm going to talk about is the EPIC. This is also one of the most important ones, since it reflects the life cycle of a business or enabler feature, which is the result of several stories, enabler stories, etc., all together. The first step that we have in the workflow is given by the status funnel. 
I really like this because it represents a big funnel where all ideas for epics are more than welcome. Instead of tossing them away immediately, we register them in a place so that later we can decide what to do. The second step is indeed to decide which epics to grab from the funnel and dedicate some time to analyze them to determine how relevant they are. To do this, the epic should progress to the analyzing status via the Action Explorer. This will be the moment where business will evaluate the pros and the cons of investing in that particular epic. The outcome of that analysis could be one of two. The epic is rejected and goes back to the funnel status until there's a new opportunity to pick it up again. It can also be deleted if one believes that will never succeed. The other possibility is to approve the epic, which will then become part of the backlog, here represented by the backlog status. Being in the backlog means that sooner or later the team will start working on the epic. When that happens, it should be pushed to the implementing status via the start working action. However, it might also happen that, after some time in the backlog, someone decides that it no longer makes sense to deliver that epic. This means that, via the cancel action, the epic status is updated back to the funnel status, so that maybe in the future, they may pick it up again. When the teams complete the implementation of the epic, it's time to validate it. For that, the team should request validation, putting the epic into the validating on staging status. This means that the EPIC is being fully integrated, if needed, and being deployed to be validated by the business as a whole and not as a set of individual stories. This can happen as part of an iteration review, for instance. Since it's being sent for validation, it means that, once again, one of two things will happen. The EPIC as a whole is rejected and sent back to the implementing status so that the team or the teams can work on that. This may be because it didn't comply with the acceptance criteria. The other possibility is the EPIC being accepted and then sent to production, where it will transition to the deploying production status. When an EPIC is in deploying production, it means it will be made available in the production environment and will be ready to be released when required by the business. When that happens, the EPIC should be pushed via the action release, reaching the releasing status. When an EPIC is released, it will be finally assessed by the final users, which should allow the business and the team to collect information about successful and valuable is the EPIC. Based on this information, the business should then decide if they should continue to develop and improve the EPIC or they just stop it. If they decide to continue, they should call the action Persevere, which will bring the EPIC back to the implementing status. On the other hand, if the business decide that they already have all the required value from the EPIC, they can complete it, putting the status to done. And that's it when it comes to the EPIC workflow. Program, Solution and Portfolio EPICs They all represent a sort of container for a significant development initiative that captures the most relevant investments. Because of that, they all have the same principles, which means that they work in the same way at least from a cycle life point of view. The starting point is the funnel. Just like I described it for the epics, the program solution and portfolio epics also have a placeholder for all potential good ideas. They may originate as a strategic concern or ideas coming from the teams that deserve portfolio consideration. Usually a short description about the idea is enough for it. The next step is the reviewing status and it can be achieved via the action request revision. The portfolio solution and program epics that come to this status deserve some additional investigation, although the investment should be small. To help with this investigation, some key information should be provided, like the description, the business outcomes, and the leading indicators. Fields like WSGF should be used in order to prioritize the most relevant epics, since it will be based on the WSGF that they will proceed on the analysis status. This can be done via the Request Analysis action. Of course, if you decide to reject the EPIC, which will make her back to the funnel for future assessment. You can also decide to delete it in case you clearly understand that it will never be implemented. The portfolio solution or program EPICs that make to the analysis status deserve a more rigorous analysis and require further investment. 
This usually includes activities like definition of a minimal viable product, cost estimates for an MVP, and the anticipated scope of the entire epic, a go-no-go -no -go decision by management, etc. After this analysis, business and management may decide that the investment is not worth it, at least for now. So they reject the proposal, bringing the status back to the funnel for future assessment or complete rejection. Additionally, they may send it back to review via the action More Info, which happens when additional information is needed in order to continue the assessment exercise. If, on the other hand, the analyst brings the decision to proceed with the EPIC, then they should approve it, pushing the status to backlog. From this moment on, a program solution or portfolio EPIC is ready to be worked on by the teams. Needless to say, that the items with the highest WSGF are the first ones to be tackled. As soon as there is team capacity to start working on the EPIC, this should be pushed to the implementing status via the Start Working Action. The implementation can be tracked by, by the progress of the corresponding child EPICs. If necessary, the teams can hold the implementation of the Portfolio Solution or Program EPIC. This can happen for several different reasons, including a change in priority, for instance. If this is the case, the EPIC should be sent back to the backlog status via the Stop Working Action. The final status is done. There are a couple of reasons to have this EPIC market as such. One is when the business agrees that they have already achieved all the value they wanted for the EPIC. It's completed. Another reason can be the fact that the business decided to drop the EPIC as it is and pivot towards another direction. The EPIC is also marked as done, even if some of the child items has not been completed. In the future, if the business decides to resume the work of the program solution or portfolio EPIC that was with the status done, they will move it to implementing via the action Resume Work. So, as you could see, there are some key workflows that you might want to set up straight away from the beginning. This means making sure that not only everyone understands them, but also agrees with them, which sometimes is indeed the hardest part. As I describe in one of my next videos about the perfect Scrum board, the proper setup of the different workflows has an impact on the clarity and visibility of the progress of the work being done by the team.